Why do you want to compete and spend three days just in the dirt and tired and working so hard? What is it about it that you like that so much? Um, you put me in an aid station or a hospital and I will go nuts. On this episode of Soldiers, we find out what it takes to be crowned the best medic in the United States Army. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing the suffering. <laughs> so you take a certain amount of joy in that, don't you? You've got to be a little sadistic when it comes to creating competitions. Team 25! Because you, if you don't make it challenging, if you don't make it worth uh, a flight when you get here, then why, why even have it? We linked up with two soldiers from the 10th Mountain Division who were back for a second chance. And as soon as they announced the winners, I looked at Jared and I told him, like, hey, like, we're coming back again. Him and I have one of those love-hate relationships. See, things are either really good with us and then there's just like... Grab that All the teams that were here to compete the best medic were talented. But finding a team that wanted to come back and go through this insanity again, this was a no-brainer. It's 7.30 and we are heading to Camp Bullis. Camp Bullis is where the best medic competition is. And tonight is the last few things you're gonna do before they kick the, the events off tomorrow. And we are, uh, we're gonna pay particular attention to a group of soldiers from the 10th Mountain. It's two soldiers and they actually competed last year. So they're back for more. Right on the lake. Yeah, I'm over on uh, the lake here on the side. So let me ask you, did you did you join when your first enlistment was? Did you come in as a medic? I did, yeah. Okay. What what drew you to that? Uh, uh, my dad, when I told him I was joining the Army, my dad said, join anything that's um, not infantry. He didn't want me doing infantry. And I thought I'd be slick because I knew the medics worked with infantry. So I became a medic just <laughs> as a way to underhandedly Give go it, work with say, the infantry. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> And, and, and what about you? What was your draw? Did you come um, in as a medic too? Yeah, I came in as a medic. Uh, I had a brother who was uh, in the medic. He was in the Air Force. He was uh, in the medical side. But uh, it was, uh, I don't know why I did it, honestly. I just, I picked the job that like, they offered me a bunch of jobs. Like, man, maybe that job could transfer over to something, you know, when I get out. So uh, I was like, yeah, it's going to be a medic. Yeah, I love it. So when we cover a competition like this, it's really important that the crew doesn't get in the way. So after talking to them for a couple minutes, we figured it would be best to leave them alone, let them get their rest, because they were going to need it. These that I see here, are, are they... On the first day of the competition, we met Master Sergeant Mike Eldred. Now, he's the mastermind behind this whole thing. He'd been planning this competition for two years. Let's take a step back and tell me a little bit about the history of the Best Medic competition. How long has it been going on, and when did it start? It started in the 80s as the expert field medical competition. One, two, three. It was an opportunity for us to take the, the best of the best and demonstrate their knowledge and skills. I think what I'm seeing is there's a real desire to test them on all levels, physical, mental. We're testing cognitive abilities. We're testing their ability to think. And at the end and of their the day, emotional level. You know, I'm emotional. putting them in cir circumstances where they're going to have, uh, you know, they're going to have reactions, emotional reactions that will be, you know, part of their stress level. Because Combat is unpredictable. That's right. That's right. Yeah, get some. Yeah. We're trying to, to incorporate agile, adaptive uh, you know, thinking processes, using critical thinking processes into their into their decisions. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing the suffering. <laughs> so you take a certain amount of joy in that, don't you? You've got to be a little sadistic when it comes to creating competitions because you, if you don't make it challenging, if you don't make it worth uh, the flight you know, to get here, then why, why even have it? So there are some guys that are coming back. They're repeat clients. What does it say about those guys? They come, they, they play. They're masochists. They're masochists. 
all 32 teams take a series of fitness tests. And the better you do, the earlier you start. It's literally a race against time to finish all the lanes. Now our team from the 10th Mountain ended up in the middle of the pack, so they kind of got a late start. Walk me through that first day uh, of activities that you uh, experienced. What happened? Yeah, as soon as we got down, took fire from our north. Had to return fire and bound into cover, which is a wood line 100, 150 meters out. Him and I have one of those love-hate relationships. See, things are either really good with us, and then there's this, like, Grab that ten minute stretches where you just, I want to knock your teeth out and Ready? Let's go. grab each other by the throat. But you know, at the end of it, you know, we went through it together, and you know, it, it's, it helps you building that relationship. Something he mentioned uh, yesterday was we've done a lot of sucky stuff together. Yeah, yeah, it's good. We make a good team. We dragged him to the wood line, uh, treated him some more. Transitioned to a Skedco, which is a flexible litter that you can use for hoisting operations. Let's go. You know, tell me about why you're here again this year. How did that come to be? We're here last year, obviously. We competed and we were sitting. We knew that we weren't, like, we like, had, a, you know, maybe we're not winning, whatever. We just want to get it over with. Close call. We were in the uh, auditorium for the ceremony, obviously, and they, they announced the winners. And as soon as they announced the winners, I looked at Jared and I told him, like, hey, like, we're coming back again. Moved him a little bit farther, maybe 50 meters, uh, and came up to a 30-foot cliff. Yo, Bailey guy, you ready? We hooked in, we hooked our patient in, and we repelled with him, and it was awesome. I really appreciate that part of the medicine because not all medics really get that training. It's something I thoroughly believe they should be implemented and I'm glad they tested it. <laughs> when we came out to see the lanes, I, I picked that mannequin up and I was, I, it's like, wow, yeah, it's that's not, heavy. It's, I think it's like 180 pounds yeah. or whatever. But yeah, it's, and you got two people working it, it's not that yeah. bad. Yeah. Especially uh, down here in the um, the creek, you know, it goes pretty smooth over the rock, so there's not, not a lot of uh, friction there. So. so what's you guys, I don't want to take too much more time, but when you think about pacing yourselves and moving through next next thing and the next thing, how do you approach that? you just feel each other out and say, hey, I feel pretty good, let's keep moving, let's do some planning, take a, a knee or what? Yeah, we, we that's what we did last year, and that's what we'll probably continue to do this year. We just talked, you know, hey man, I need a break, so. For the next phase, Evans and Sheets had to navigate through the woods for five miles undetected, so we couldn't go with them. But we took this opportunity to meet some mountain warfare school instructors from the National Guard, Sergeant First Class Bert Severin and Staff Sergeant Andreas Bond-Webster. What does it mean to you to be here competing as a best medic? I love competition. That's what I thrive on. Just to kind of prove it to myself that I can still do it and I'm, I haven't slacked that much on my skills. How long have you two been working together as a team? Honestly, about three weeks. Really? Yeah. How's he doing? Can you talk to us now? Yes, I'm the old guy on the team. Okay. And he's the, uh, the young pretty face, I guess. Ridicule. We, uh, that's, that's how we encourage each other. The old guy, the fat kid, um, in, in a good natured way, of course. You've been through some lanes. Has there been anything that has, you know, been particularly uh, challenging for you guys that, you know, that you can think about? I will say, and I could show you my hands to the camera, but the terrain here is incredibly difficult. Uh, the brush, the vegetation, is out there to stop you at all costs. Just ask our camera guy. <laughs> Why do you think this kind of competition is important for? the Army medical community. It kind of puts a spotlight on what we are actually capable of and kind of all the different facets that we have to our job. Um, a lot of times if you're a line medic, you're more often than not an infantryman first. And then once bullets start flying and people actually get hurt, that's when you become the medic. So you're an integral part of the group that way. But it's nice to kind of put that in the forefront and make that something that is seen throughout the Army. You need to have some kind of, uh, something to strive for, right? And everybody wants to be the best of the best. So this is the perfect venue to, to throw out there. You know, you can, and it's army-wide, which is a huge organization. Um, and I think that says it all, something to strive for. The team spent 36 hours on Sergeant Eldred's gauntlet of lanes before they got their first break, but it wouldn't be long before their next event. 
It's 0330 on day three of the Army Best Medic competition. At 0100, the team started a foot march. Now, what they don't know is how long it was going to be. It's actually 12 miles. A lot of them were talking yesterday like they thought it was going to be 18, but that's the mental part of this that they just got to keep pushing through. The other thing is that this is only the beginning of another full day of things that are going to stress them and tax them to their limit. Martin. Team 25. Where's the finish? Our team from the 10th Mountain finished in the top seven of the foot march. Wasn't that bad. Uh, yeah, it wasn't bad. Our feet held up pretty good, so it's good. Now you get the rest of the I mean, I get the rest and eat That's right. I'll build, build the entire way, yeah. That's what we yeah. other people saying that, you know? Yeah, that was the only that was the only really bad part about it was that it's uphill. Aside from that it wasn't too terrible. I heard there on the on the road march there was someone who actually dropped out and then said, forget it, we're gonna get back in. There might have been something like that. Oh. They, they, uh, there was a, a team that felt uh, that kind of tested the waters in uh, in that, but uh, they realized they were the first team to quit, and, uh, or would have been yeah. if they had done that, and, uh, and they decided that that wasn't for them, so they, they turned Good. it back on. Good. Yeah. The National Guard eventually crossed the line. No worse for the wear. Finish. All good. Yeah. How are your feet holding up, Bon? It's pretty, yeah. pretty torn up. Yeah. I bet. <laughs> and ride. Yeah. As the sun comes up on the final day of the competition, the teams still have no idea where they stand. But that just means that the title of best medic is still up for grabs. So today, Sheets and Evans will get their weapons, zero them in, compete in a series of shooting lanes, and then a mystery event. So, so what is it about a competition like this that draws you and Jarrett to it? I mean, why do you want to compete and spend three days just in the dirt and tired and working so hard? What is it about it that you like that so much? Um, I like being like, I'm, I'm a really physical person. Yeah, I love being physical. I love being outdoors. I love doing stuff like this. I'm the kind of guy like, you put me in an aid station or a hospital and I will go nuts. Maybe I'm not a better medic, but being here, I'm a, I'm have the, at least the potential to be a better leader because I can take the things that we've done here and I can go back and I can teach them um, to my medics. So you see that this competition has an inherent value for the, the medical community as a whole. Oh yeah, absolutely. What are some of the character traits? What, what makes up a, a combat medic? They're, they're not people that are seeking glory. We're the type of people that are they're more likely to rush to the sound of gunfire. It does take a special sort of type of person. I was probably never like this before I joined the Army, but you know, I became a medic and I, I was assigned my first platoon, BCO 128 Infantry. Those are your guys and they depend on you and it's just having that like, you know, these guys are, you know, they really need me. Just I guess that sense of like, um, it's, a, it's a pretty indescribable feeling, I don't know. I love, I just love, enjoy helping people and the fact that I can change someone's life drastically for the better is, it's awesome. I, I do want to ask you, how do you think you did this year? I think we did a lot better than we did last year. Um, my partner's gonna say we did top five. Thanks for making that. I, fish. I like to. I'm more of a cautious person. I like to say that we were in top ten. That's good. Want to get a bigger than last year we took 11th. This year, I'm thinking we did better than. That. This is something the crew and I talked about a lot, and that is where are these guys gonna end up. At the end of the day, we thought they'd place in the top five. A compassionate heart. A sound mind, a skilled hand, a deadly shot, and yes, a strong back. Shoot, move, communicate, survive, save, and adapt. That's our art, and that's our science. So our second place team, from the 10th Mountain Division, Sergeant Jared Sheets and Sergeant Matthew Evans. <laughs> we found out they took second place, man, 
We were so excited, and I think they were too. But the thing I take away the most is something that Sergeant Cheats said when he said, I may not be the best medic, but what I learned will make me a better leader. And I think that's true of every soldier that competed here.